Hello, welcome to another video tutorial. This one's going to be modding the Sega Master System 2 so we can output 60 Hz. So this is going to allow us to play the games at full speed and with a full resolution because um, with 50 Hz it's compact, the screen, the uh, aspect ratio almost gets shrunken down. So this is with PAL and um, you can't play the games at full speed. And obviously we want to be playing the games at full speed so we're not being cheated out of the games. Uh, the good thing about this is we won't need to create an RGB lead to use the 60 hertz because you, you did have to do that with the Mega Drive. But this um, we can just do this mod and then use 60 hertz straight through any of the video outputs. So we've got this. We need switch, of course. We need some wire, some solder and of course a soldier knife so first we want to start taking this to bits Okay, so once you've got all the screws removed off the bottom, you can lift the top off. Be careful to make sure there's no wires, and there isn't. Now, we want to take the shielding off the motherboard, and we want to then take the motherboard out. As you can see, mine's pretty dirty, there's big clumps of dust in it and stuff, and that's because I've never opened it. So whilst we're in here, we may as well clean it as well. So, you want to get all these screws out of here, and you want to get the shield screws and put them to one side, because you don't want to get these confused. Ok so once you've got these screws removed also note that a lot of tutorials and stuff on the internet oops sorry autofocus yeah a lot of um, tutorials and stuff when you're modding consoles tell you that you should flick the power switch across and whatever when before you open it just so you can discharge all the current and voltage out of things but I never do that to tell you the truth because yeah so just be careful that you, you could do it just to make sure but Whatever. Right, so we want to get this metal shielding off. It's very simple uh, to get this display in 60 hertz. Very, very simple actually. Unlike the Mega Drive. Right, as you can see. Pretty filthy inside there, so I'll probably clean that before I put it back together. Now we want to get this out of here so we've got better access to it. So we want to remove these two screws here on either side of the cartridge connector, that's going to give us full access to get the motherboard out. Okay, so there's the motherboard, it's fully out of the case, and now we want to look for the chip that says Sega 315-5246, and it is this one right here, you can't see that very well, it's this one right here, just behind the controller port. I'll try and get some light on that in a sec for you. We're going to locate a certain chip and it's this one right here. So you can see where that is, it's behind controller port one. So I'm now going to zoom in on that so you know it's this one. And we need to find the 57th pin of this chip. Now we know that this end pin right here is pin 64, as it says. And we've got uh, small pins and we've got long pins and we want to find pin 57 which happens to be the fourth pin in 
that is a long pin so it's this one so what we want to do is we want to heat up the contact and pull the leg out and bend it upwards with like some snap nose pliers or something so that's what I'm going to do now as you can now see I slowly heated up the contact on the board and then if it ever focuses come on I heated up the contact on the board but not too much using the soldering iron and then I just wrapped a piece of wire around the contact, the pin and then slowly lifted the wire out as it was heating up as you can see it's no longer contacting the board and there it is, it's right there, I've just bent it upwards I tilt the board so you can see there's the pin it's just completely off the motherboard now now what you want to do is you want to put some electrical tape or some form of tape underneath this and then we need to solder onto this I'll just use the few sheets, few layers of normal sellotape because I haven't got any, any insulation tape but it should do because it's protecting us from dropping any solder on the other pins or whatever so you want to get about, mm, I don't know, about 22 centimeters of wire so that's what I'm going to do now, cut it once again don't have a ruler on me so I'm just going to guess how long 22 centimeters is but it needs to go from here to the side of the case we're going to be mounting the uh, switch inside the case but it's going to be poking outside so you're going to need some form of dremel or drill so you can drill a hole to put the switch in the side of the case which I'll show you later so you want to get some solder which I can't really do because it's holding my light up Tin your wire, which I'm going to do right now. We also need to tin the leg. So, I'm going to get a bit. Jesus Christ. 